response to this, this video called Low Bearing Wall Framing Basics Engineering Home Building Part 1. All right, so the, uh, the narrator states that, uh, what, what is it going to state in just a moment? Let's play it. You know, here's an example of what a wall might look like that would be non-supporting or non-structural. So this person, is, the narrator, is going to state that, or state, state it, and you'll hear him state, that uh, this is a non-load-bearing wall based on not seeing lapping here. Let, let's let it play, and then I'll give you my answer. And uh, this would be whenever you would have the end of the ceiling joist connecting to another part of the building. It would either be connecting to a beam that would be supporting the weight at forward. one end, or it would be sitting on top of a wall. Um, so it's, it's got to be supported somehow. And if, if, the, if you look at you run across something like this, yes, sir. where you have a wall that's in the center, there's a good chance that that's not going to be a structural wall. It's a good chance. However, if you run across something like this, um, where the ceiling joists lap over a wall, you can see that the end of the ceiling joists on the right and the end of the ceiling joists on the left right. to the outer so, exterior so walls. So what he's stating is that the non that the, if you, unless you see the lapping, then it's not load bearing. Well, well that, that, that's a falsity. All right, and I know he said possibly or whatever it may be. The, the falsity is that it's the span that matters, the unsupported span from here to here and from here to where we're coming from. And if the unsupported span based on walls are, say, 10 feet, there is no reason to have to, if you can get away with just buying uh, and your whole distance of your building is, say, 18 feet, and you can buy 2 by 8, 2 by 8 will do this span, will do this load for what you calculated for, if, say, 40 pounds, uh, per square foot for the live load and dead load for whatever where you may live. If it only takes a two by eight for that span, then you don't oversize it just to oversize it. You should oversize it plus one, I call it. <coughs> so a two by ten would, would be a better choice. Um, you don't want to run it to the bottom of your uh, your scale. Uh, not based on span. So you don't want to max out your span for each member. And you can you can not match it out by bringing these in closer, say to 12 inch on centers, as opposed to 16, as opposed to 19 on centers. The uh, so you could save money if you knew your wall room, uh, your layout of your house had multiple walls. You could save money the next floor you were building if you can incorporate the walls um, studs and transfer the load. Say this was on a pad down to the foundation, um, then you can incorporate that with uh, smaller framing members, uh, as I said, two by eight. And you can buy 18 footers instead of what, buying two tens, splice them together here, it's more work, and now you're splicing them with a two foot overlap because someone told you that you must, you can't, shouldn't use a two by uh, an 18 footer. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so. The other indicator, this is more probably low bearing. It's pretty close to this one. You don't have to be on the money, but it's pretty close to the studs and the, uh, the whatever we see here. This may be the this is a, this is a weird. This is kind of an odd back here. You can see a higher rim board. Um, what appears to be a rim board. So that's that's an odd duck there a little bit. Um, the uh, back to this. So we uh, you know the scale of it. Uh, this being a, uh, a floor, a floor or a attic ceiling before you get to the roof, um, or with load bearing. Let's just stick with the load bearing thing, as he stated. You see now that you also have a header here. So the uh, architect or engineer put a header in here. Why? Well, if you got a header, it's to transfer the loads. If it's just a ceiling, uh, you know you can do some cripplers. You know, you something small. You don't. You can turn it. Uh, you know, the ceiling load is practically nothing at all. It is, it is something, but it's just ceiling load. Now, unless you're going to have a, a floor load up here also, then you have the header. And if you have a floor load, well, then you are going to make this. Now this becomes a, a load-bearing wall. If you got a floor up here of any type, an attic floor, all right, so it's now a load-bearing wall. Um, so you don't go, this is a video response. So just don't believe that 
just because you see this that the other doesn't exist. It depends on your live load and your dead load that you're going to have on that above, um, a, a downward uh, on top of the surface of here, or the underside if it's drywall. Um, so, is it load bearing? Well, uh, load bearing of what? Of drywall? Because if it's just, uh, you know, this could help the deflection of drywall or ceiling being deflection. That makes this load bearing for the drywall and you don't get some crazy deflection in your ceiling. Um, so, yes, this counts as load bearing one way or another. Whether it's a ceiling that it's helping with the deflection on, or whether it's the plywood or wood that would go up here for an attic, if this is an attic, and um, that being the rim board. Looking over here, maybe it's a roof going to be similar to the neighbor's roof. Um, all right, I just wanted to give you that and sort of a video response to this channel's comments about low bearing wall framing basics and it matters don't just assume it's not it matters your dead load and your live load on that structure including the ceiling and your spans and what material is being used take care